mtu msali tuno respect sheria mna kwao lazima pia na hao furazi ni mfano kabila ndio kwao hako chafika ukweli na hakika kadiri na chika furaha kwa hakiki tutakuwa shabiki tufaji kuziki mimi nafiki mimi nafiki muda mna wiki mimi na mziki split ni mukiki tutakuta sikia kwa makini mfulisi kwa chima na silly feel me There's a video, perhaps on this channel, the title of the video is called, You're Gonna Die, Be Happy. I want us, if you have not checked that video out, please feel free to check that video out because it speaks about us and our view of success only from a materialistic point of view and we need to get out from that this material success crap this is the thinking of your and my oppressor his idea of success is cars houses and trying to control people to make people do what you feel they should do and all this other crazy nonsense you don't want to be like that. But many of us are caught up in that same type of thinking. Success is a new pair of shoes, is a house. and You're caught up in things that are not alive. And you don't really see value in those things which are living. And that's a problem. If you wish, and if we wish to change our reality, we need to get up out of that type of programming, so let the deprogramming begin. Get yourself up out of this crap. It's all right to have nice, decent things, but when we get to the point where we need five cars, we need 500 bathrooms in our house and all this other outlandish we need a basketball court in our house and a tennis court inside our house and all this all this uh, we need a zoo in our house and all this other crazy stuff you need to get up out of it and i am very disappointed in christians because that's a sign of greed don't your bible teach us against greed but your pastors practice greed Every day. They want all this material stuff. I thought heaven was good enough for y'all. It's a bunch of hypocrites running around here. Now I want to talk about these suckers. These racists. And some of these people who want to be racist. Those who for whatever reason. Dislike. Now the descendants of slaves born in America have a dark skin. The people of soul. We have not done anything to none of these people. Whether they were born here in the United States or they come from boats or airplanes, however the hell they get here, but they have a problem with us because of an image they have been given by whoever. So you live in a country, we live in a nation that humiliates dark skinned people, African Americanists. They make mockery of us. They try. They talk to us like we little children. Y'all need to do this, and y'all need to do that. Now, mind you, their group of people is the cause of the problem. They want to blame the victims, and then they got some of y'all dumbass folks telling you that you're not a victim, because clearly you don't know what a victim is. Now, when you look at their courts all over this country, they don't mind being victims. Because they suing to get some money, they suing. They don't. They don't mind being a victim to get something. Here you are, you stupid as hell, listening to these people. They are in court right now. Matter of fact, what is this? They got this scandal going on right now. This uh, that Weinstein guy, Weinstein, whatever his name is, that that movie mogul. He sexually harassed men, women, and children. <laughs> whatever. Now, of course, they want to bring criminal charges against him, but they want his money because they are victims. Now, how come it's good for them? It's all right for them to be victims, but when it comes 
to the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin, how come we can't be victims? The people that died in 9-11, their families get paid. You didn't, you didn't die in 9-11, but the children, the family get paid. Well, you weren't no slave. Well, those people, the people in Israel right now, the, the majority of them, they wasn't in no Holocaust. The families that's getting paid for 9-11, they wasn't involved. They probably wouldn't even in, they probably wouldn't even in New York City at all. But when it comes to, see, these people think we're so damn stupid. What about black on black crime? When we talk about how these racist Caucasian police kill us day in and day out. What about black on black crime? What about it? What about it? What about pink on pink, white on white, Caucasian on Caucasian crime when you got a sucker shooting people down at a country? What about that? That's not the issue. Each issue is different. We're talking about what police do, who are paid by our tax dollars and turn around and murder us. That's the issue. Y'all should be doing better than this. You've been here 500 years. How come you not better? But at the same time, oh, ooh, I can punch these. Ooh, I can punch these bastards in the face because they want to act so dumb. They just ignore. They ignore slavery. Slavery was over 300 years. And then even when the when my ancestors, our ancestors came out of slavery, they progressed and did better than the poor Caucasian, the middle class Caucasian people was. So that was the reason for the formation of the Ku Klux Klan and, and the police and everything and whatever. All these crackers come together to stop the progress of Slaves and their children. Oh, we but we want you just want to forget all that. They want to ignore J Jim Crow, which lasted over a hundred years. The Black Code, which was was which also was part of the Jim Crow crap, about hundred some years also. Oh, we just going to ignore all that. We're going to we're going to ignore job discrimination, redlining. Racial pro profiling. Oh, we're just going to ignore all the stuff that we, we've done to keep y'all Negroes down, and y'all should be doing better. Now, you don't have you don't have a Jim Crow. You don't have a Caucasian code. You don't have no redlining. You don't have all these things against you. Matter of fact, you are ahead of the game. You are a beneficiary, beneficiary from slavery. The bottom line is that if Caucasian people had left dark-skinned people, black America alone, we would be running this country. That's the bottom line. We have the talent. We are the competent people. We got it going on. We got the swag, and they know it. There are also unknown laws that they use against us that we probably don't even know nothing about. But the bottom line is, we don't need you. We don't need you. It was the races. The races need us. We gave this country life. Can you imagine America without dark-skinned people playing basketball or even golf or tennis or wherever we are at? We give this country swag. We give it life. We make the United States popular. Otherwise, this country be boring. It don't have no life. It's, it's a nerd, <laughs> you know. Everything about us, they, they, they steal from us. They steal it because we are the life givers. We are the people of soul. We are the essence of life. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. You don't want to hear that, but that's true. With your lazy ass. Why didn't you work for yourself? The slave don't need you. You needed the slave. Because quite clearly, the slave know how to do work. Your lazy ass don't know how to do nothing. So the slave gave his massa life. We are the life givers of America. They don't like you, but they don't want to get rid of you because they are what they what people say in YouTube land. These the Caucasian people of this nation, they are vampires, leeches. 
and they know you have a soul, brothers and sisters, they know you have a soul because they are feeding off your soul. They are feeding off your life essence. We give these people life. Without our blood, they are nothing. And if I'm wrong, prove me wrong, racist. Prove me wrong, pink Caucasian America. Prove me wrong. Give the black folks the reparations. Get us out of here and we'll see how good and how, how you will operate, how you'll function. You can't do it. You don't like us, but you hate us. That's why you're always trying to control the masses of these dark-skinned people because we give you life. And then you have all these other suckers talking the same crap that don't know what happened to us don't want to understand, copying the same crap that the races, whatever the races have taught them, here they come from South America, or Mexico, or even Africa, wherever they come from, China, where they come from, here they come with the same crap. Y'all been here 500 years, and we just got here. Look, we just got here. Look what we got. I'm driving a Porsche, and look what we got. Have you been through a Jim Crow? No. Have you been through slavery? No. Have you been through black codes? No. Have anything, have laws been made specially to harass and control you? No. Where do they end up at? They come to soul people neighborhoods. They come to our neighborhoods. And they serve their businesses. You know why? Because we are the life givers. We give them life. They are the vampires. They are the vampires just like the Caucasian people. Blood suckers of the poor. Blood suckers of abused people. Blood suckers of victims. Just like a lion that will eat an animal that's already dead. Coming up on, coming up on a, a carcass. You, you are not capable of getting your own food. The, the white man, these immigrants, these people, you're not capable of getting your own food. So you got to come and feed off the carcass what's left of a dead people or people that was created in a, in a dead state because you are a vampire, you are a bunch of leeches. And then these immigrants or aliens or whatever, however you want to view them, they take advantage of our struggle for civil rights, our struggle for human rights, and use it for themselves. And then they turn around and try to make mockery of us. You better all, oh, man. Don't, you better not come in my face with that garbage. Because I'm going to check you. I'm going to put you right into the sewer where rats belong. A bunch of leeches, a bunch of vampires. You can call us whatever you want to, but ain't nothing so nasty and disgusting as a vampire. You're a bunch of ticks and leeches, a bunch of fleas. That's what they all are, blood suckers. And they sit up, here, they, here you are sucking up people blood that can't fight back, that can't do nothing, and you all proud. Look what we got. You're a blood sucker and a leech. You ever see a, a flea full of blood, a tick full of blood, a leech full of, of blood? That's how they are. They ain't work for nothing. Then you're going to turn around to how hard you worked. Sucking somebody else's blood. Right, yeah. And you can only impress another vampire. So all these immigrants, they come to America and, and they successful. So they can impress another vampire. There's nothing impressive about you. Now, this does not this does not mean that all are like that, but there are many who do fit into that category. If the shoe don't fit, don't wear it. But if you have that type of mentality, then I'm talking to your crazy ass.
Now, I have a confession to make. All right. G gather around, everybody. I have a confession to make. Bro, what you going to confess? I am going to confess that I actually like YouTube beefs. I do. I, I like I like beefs. I like debates. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I thrive on it. I like it. What do they say? Steel sharpens steel. Unfortunately for me, there ain't too much steel around here. All these people, all they know how to do is cry. You talk about me. You don't like what I say. You an agent. You a spy. You a cool. You a guitar. What kind of steel is that? <laughs> oh, anyway. Uh, uh, hey, throwing me off the subject. But I, I am confessing. Now, what I don't like about it is that I'm not here to debate and have a beef with descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin. I'm really not interested in going back and forth and debating and arguing, beefing with you. That's not my purpose. That's not my mission. Unfortunately for me, I have to do that on many occasions, but I'm not interested in you are victims. You are victim. You are in a weak position. I want to deal with the big boy. I want to deal with the big man on campus. I want to deal with those who have a problem with all of us. Whether you're comedic, you are a, 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 a soul Christian brother, a soul Christian uh, 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 Muslim, whatever you call yourself, somebody has a problem with us due to the color of our skin. They're giving us severe problems. Those are the people I want to deal with. But you would rather mess with me than them boys. They don't come trying to mess with me and gun me down. But here you are the victim, the people I don't want to mess with. Here y'all come. Because you can't comprehend what somebody's saying. You don't listen. You only hear what you want to hear. You don't ask for clarification. Matter of fact, actually, I believe you have a hatred yourself against people with dark skin. I, I actually do. Here you are talking about racism, and you don't like dark skin your damn self. Mm. And if I do debate you, if I beef with you, I would rather be able to look at your face. And the reason why I want to see your face just like you see my face, is because when you are in a debate, when you are in an argument, or a or even a civil discussion, I want to be able to see your face as you answer your questions. I want to see how you respond to being questioned. I want to see those different things because when you are able to do that, you can take advantage of these expressions. And you can see, you can see how certain questions, certain inquiry uh, makes a response, and you can see the weaknesses in your opponent. Now, what many faceless people don't know, well, about me, I'm so good, I can see your weakness even in your writing. I can tell when I inquire about something or say something. And how you respond, I can tell that's a weak spot. And for me, that's where I, that's when you have to hit somebody when you find their weak spot. Many of you do not want to beef and debate and argue with me because it's very difficult to find a weak spot. Because I have my I have tried to dot my I's, cross my T's. You have not done that. So you have opened yourself up to really getting your, your ass whooped. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how else simply to say it. One of the problems that you have trying to debate and argue and have a civil discussion with many of us cannot think. 
That's what the subject or the topic that I've chosen for these few minutes. Here you are, a human being that you claim with the greatest brain of all the animals on the planet and you can't think. You ever been in a classroom and it's almost test time and the teacher gives us a pretest quiz and you can raise your hand or whatever? Many of us don't want to raise our hand and when you look at the class, people are actually holding, some people hold their head like if holding their head is going to make them know something. If you don't know, you don't know. They, they hold their head and they squinch in their eye because they're having a problem thinking because they don't know. They're having a problem thinking. You cannot study nothing if you are unable to think. This is one of the main problems you find in especially men who abuse women. The reason why men strike women in these abusive relationships most times is because women have a fast tongue. They're thinking faster than the man. Before he can get a thought out, she's on to something else. And this is called the wife nagging the husband because he's unable to keep up with what she's presenting. He's unable to think because a lot of times what she's saying is true and that's, that's bothering your conscience because what she's saying is true and she's, and right before you can deal with that, she's hitting you with something else. Why are you finding all these faults in me? So this is what I do. I just punch you in your mouth. I don't have to worry about it no matter how you like that. That's one of the reasons why when I was growing up as a young man, I used to fight my sisters all the time. I was in the same situation. My sisters was quick at the mouth. They was quick, quick, quick thinking. I know, I know, before you even say it, I know, I know. I know that I'm a nobody. I know that I only have 10 subscribers. I know that nobody listens to me. But guess what? I'm going to speak anyway. Because in the realm or in the world of the internet, this cyber world, you never know who really is listening, you never know who you might reach. So I don't care anything about those who tell me nobody is listening to me when my telephone is ringing and when clearly somebody is listening to me. You don't have to take my advice because I don't teach nothing. You don't have to take heed of my suggestion I am like a lawyer you can take my advice you can take my suggestion or you can do your own thing and clearly as we see you doing your own thing it's not really working out that hot is it you pretend like it is but it's not really working so I'm going to give us some advice and maybe if you try it you might like it maybe you can take advice from somebody who takes advice and I'm not so high and mighty I can't take advice from a three-year-old mm. I can't take advice from the bum in the street 
who looks like he is half or she is half out of their mind. Wisdom and truth comes from so many various places and sources, but because of our arrogance, because we are know-it-alls, we ignore the answers that we claim that we pray to God for because God does not put the answer in the vessel that we believe it should be or a vessel that we like. You can't tell God how to operate. Now, yes, yes, brother, I don't know who this faceless cat is. You always talk about fire kind in the nation of Islam. You damn skippy. And when you make your videos, you can speak about whatever you want to speak of. However, I have been accused of nothing but negativity. On this visit, I hope to bring something more of substance that helps us and does not look as though, which I feel I never bring negativity, but we don't like to see or we don't like to believe that something is wrong with us. We've grown to such a high supreme level. We are, we have reached perfection. We have reached the number seven. I want to say this very quickly. I love basketball. I'm a basketball player. And I have been in games whereas there's very few minutes on the clock and you are down. Just because you are down does not mean that you are out. What are you going to do in those last few minutes determine the outcome of the game? You cannot trip off. You cannot waste time thinking about what you've done in the past. You have to think about what are you going to do now different from the past so that you can win this game. What strategy are you going to use? Clearly, if you use the strategy of the past, then it is inevitable that your game is lost. So you have to consider changing your strategy. If the black conscious, black power community wishes to win this game against some very smart people who at this time win in the game because clearly, again, we are the losers then you must change your strategy. You must change your behavior. I'm speaking to the nation of Islam, especially under the leadership of the most honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. And those who are under the leadership of Minister Farrakhan, not only must you think of your time right now in the present, but you must think of a time when Brother Farrakhan is no longer here with you to guide you, to help you. And even in recent speeches, Minister Farrakhan is telling you to prepare yourself for that time. Otherwise, all your work, all your effort has gone in vain. It is like the scriptures say, the grass cometh up, but then it withereth away. You don't want to be like grass. And we all go, we all are going to wither with away. But instead of being like grass, perhaps you can be like the mighty oak, the mighty tree. So we must reevaluate our behaviors and our strategy as far as how we are approaching this struggle. Now, the nation of Islam has the manpower, the nation of Islam has the influence to decrease the numbers of murders in the soul community. Now, let's get real. You can't stop nobody from killing somebody. If somebody wants to go out and shoot somebody and murder somebody, that's what they are going to do. So you can't blame, well, the nation of Islam 
is in Chicago. Farrakhan is in Chicago. And the murder rate is so high. Why they not doing nothing about it? You can't stop nobody. Why aren't you in your community stopping the violence? Stopping the police brutality? Stopping whatever the issue is in your community? We cannot control the behaviors of people. Matter of fact, you don't know what you might do in the next few seconds. There are people locked up in prison right now, never in their whole entire life would believe they would be in prison charged with murder. Things happen. You have two kinds of murder we have to deal with in the city of Chicago. One, of course, gang violence. It's an issue. Another is domestic violence. Now, what I'm about to offer is simple, but yet it's complex. How can we decrease the murders in the city of Chicago? The Nation of Islam, again, have the manpower, have the resources, have the influence. Also, do the people actually want to decrease these murders? Do the people, do you actually, the, those who live, the residents, do they actually want to decrease these things? Because if the people really don't want a change, then I don't care what you do, it's not going to happen. So to decrease the murders among gang members, we can set up arbitration. We can approach the leadership if there is any leadership. Just like what was done between the Bloods and the Crips. You go out to the gang members. You find out who the leadership is. And we begin a dialogue. So at least innocent persons, your grandmother, your grandfather, little children, don't continue to be shot down by stray bullets. If we cannot get any cooperation from that place, then the men need to take action. The men of Chicago don't get off your job and you want to go get a beer. As a man, you must take responsibility for what is going on. You don't need to be watching LeBron James and the NBA Finals. The men need to take control. The men need to take charge. The men need to take up arms legally because this is not your country. The city of Chicago is not going to tolerate vigilantism. So you work with your local law enforcement and those who are legal and you need to deal with this problem. Nobody can sell drugs. Nobody, no criminal can act if their activities are out in the light. So wherever they are, you go and you light it up. Criminal activity likes to operate under the cover of darkness. They cannot operate in broad daylight. So an accumulation or a cooperation between what the men in the community are doing plus the local law enforcement, and you have to include local law enforcement because you don't control nothing. But you can take action to decrease this type of thing where you live. And when men do this, your children and your women will look at us in a whole different manner because you're really taking care of business. Then we also have domestic violence. There are many people, their intent was not to shoot their best friend and stab their mother and all these different things. But we get emotional and we get caught up in situations. Perhaps 
if we set up a hotline where people, when they begin to get emotional, they can call somebody on the other end outside of the conflict just to have somebody to talk to. This is supposed to be the function of many churches. The churches have fallen off. We have people in this society who just need somebody to talk to. If they talk to somebody, maybe their actions will be different. There are people, and I know that you don't think too much of me, but people call me all the time. They may not call me no more, but they will call me and say, man, I just watched your video. Can I talk to you for a few minutes? And I tell them, I'm not, you know, I'm not that kind of minister. Will you listen to me? So I listen to people. I've listened to people and talked to some people on the telephone. They just expressing their problem to me. As long as eight hours, I talk and listen to a person for eight hours. A sister was going through a divorce upset with her husband, going through problems. And I was on the telephone, had to recharge my, recharge my phone constantly so I can listen to a person. Sometimes the only thing we need is somebody to talk to. And maybe two people who are in conflict, they might call together. Look, this is getting out of hand. Let's call the hotline and they might talk to you and we can, we can be arbitrators of our people and squash a, a lot of these, these beefs that end up, that could end up in murder. Simple yet complex, but I guarantee you if we put this into action, not coming from a religious point of view, we are doing it out of the kindness of our heart. I don't, I'm not trying to get you to come to the temple. I'm not trying to get you to come to a church. I'm doing this because I love you. And I guarantee you when the people see that you love them, not trying to use them to convert them to some religion or to some political party or whatever, just simply because you are my brother and sister, you will see in a very short amount of time how the people will begin to embrace you more, love you more, and the murder rate in Chicago, not only in Chicago, but if you do the same thing all over the country, you will see the murder rate go down. And not just for people of soul, but for anybody, when another human being knows that somebody cares for them. Jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. Until next time, y'all, peace and respect. Okay, well, we know what the title of this video is, and for some of you, you may wonder, why? Why, why, why? Well, I have my reasons why. One reason is because, and one reason I speak about the nation of Islam simply if you don't if you don't know by now you should the nation of Islam and this ministry has the same father my father is the honorable Elijah Muhammad and just like any parent you may not like your father. He's a drunk. You are ashamed of your father or whatever your father is. We all have a father. We all have an influence. We are all inspired by somebody because we come into this world knowing nothing. My father is Elijah Muhammad.
not physically, of course, but he is my father as far as my root or the genesis of my thinking process. From when I was a child all the way till today, I remember the things that my father taught me. I wish I could say for the same for my biological father, but he really wasn't interested that much in his son. He had other things to do, more important, I guess. And that's neither here or there and a totally different subject, but I give my biological father, as they say in religious texts, simply honor your parents. And I will honor my parents, and I don't have to agree or disagree with nothing they did or did not do. They get respect simply because they are our parents. So the nation of Islam and myself, we have the same father. Whether or not my father would approve of what I bring to the table today, I don't know. But we have the same father. Thus, we are family. We are family. You don't like what I have to say, but that's all right. But we are family. We come from the same womb. I dare step into the public to say I am the natural evolution of this thing called Nation of Islam. The Nation of Islam was the first time we as a dark-skinned people was introduced to the idea that God is a man. And that should tell us something. But my father, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, taught us that you don't give a baby meat. You start off giving that baby milk. There were things and there are things that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wanted to teach his people, but he could not because you simply was not ready. I wonder what those things could be if what you present to the people about God is that God is a man. Not only is God a man, but God is a black man. The black man and woman is God. Wow, mm, that's another subject too. Another reason, because we are family, I want my family to succeed. And there are issues in family that we don't like to, to speak about. And one of those issues, one of those topics is our inevitable death. I am going to die one day. Some of you wish I could die right now. <laughs> Some of you wish I, I was dead last year. Whatever. While you wishing people death, you will be right behind me. Believe that. And you still have to continue to deal with the problem of life that we've been born into. So since all of us will eventually withereth away then those who are older who have built a legacy or have built something and you want that to continue to exist after you cease to exist then we need to put plans in motion and we need to be begin to do things in order for us to survive so I am offering my family suggestion so that you can survive the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years or longer, whatever, so that your work does not go in vain, especially the work of your minister, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We must plan for our demise. And little by little, each speech that I listen to Minister Farrakhan talk about, he's giving his people a heads up. Y'all got to be ready to take this over. You got, you got to, I'm not going to be here. This is reality. Now, we don't like to talk about funerals. We don't want to talk about wills. We don't want to talk about that. 
But this is the type of conversation that needs to be going on in the nation of Islam right now. What are we going to do after Farrakhan? What are we going to do after Brother Minister? In fact, he does not have to actually die. He can just be extremely sick and put out of action. What are we going to do? How are we going to move? How are we going to progress forward? Now, so I know that we love. I know that you love Minister Farrakhan. But if we plan to move forward, then we must reevaluate our past. We love our father. We love our mother. But we must reevaluate because they are no longer here. We now must have to move forward. Many of you may not be familiar with the biography of Henry Ford, the Caucasian uh, entrepreneur who developed the assembly line to manufacture cars, Henry Ford. His son had to go in, and his son loved his father, but his father's time, and even Mr. Farcon spoke about this, his father's time was over. And his son needed, needed to go into the company and reevaluate everything that was going on. His father wanted to continue, but your time is over. Now is the time of your son. Because you're not going to be here. He has to carry on. Unfortunately for Henry Ford, his son, I believe he got sick or whatever, and he died. His son died before him. But this gives us an idea of what we must be doing if you want your work. This what you love, this nation of Islam that you work for, if you want this nation to survive, because I don't care how many times you say out of your mouth, the nation will rise and it will never fall again. That does not mean it will not. You have to put something in place to keep it arisen. So I suggest to you, and I know you love your minister, but sometimes our leadership, sometimes our teachers, sometimes they put more on us than we are actually ready for and we really don't understand and we just sit in the classroom looking at the teacher like we understand and we really don't. So Minister Farcon implemented Scientology, Dianetics, or whatever. Dianetics, actually, not Scientology itself. Dianetics, and the minister talks about Jesus, and we really, we really don't understand a whole lot of this, the, the, the thinking, really. We, we pretend we do, but we really don't, because if you could, then you could explain it more better, but y'all having problems explaining things, and why go through all that? Wait until you, what's the rush? Wait until you grow into it. Wait until the time. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that in order to embrace Caucasian people, they would have to be under Islam for 25 years. But we, but you have Caucasian people coming into the nation and y'all interacting. And mind you also, the Quran also says very clearly that in Islam, Muslims not supposed to take Christians and Jews for friends, but that's what y'all are doing. And I mean, come on, there's a conflict of interest here. Something is going on, so we need a reevaluation. So, in order to reevaluate, in order to build a strong foundation for the future without a Farrakhan, I suggest that you all go back to the basics. You need to go back. And read your message to the black man. You need to go back to the lessons. I'm not talking about the new lessons that have been been created. I'm talking about the original lessons. Message to the black man. How to eat the little books one and two. The fall of America. I'll say it as a rock. Go back to the basics. Go back to the even though there was a falling out, go back to the old uh videos where you hear Malcolm speak because. Malcolm is speaking straight from Elijah Muhammad. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said this. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that. 
when you hear, with all due respect, when you hear Brother Wesley Muhammad or Nuri Muhammad or many of these new persons speak, you don't hear them say, well, I'm saying this because Elijah Muhammad said in the fall of America or make reference to the theology of time or some material. And you have to do this because even Elijah Muhammad said, do not change my teachings. Do not revive. Do not say other, don't try to make something out of, of my teachings that it isn't. And what I love about the teachings of, of the nation of Islam, especially when I was a child, is that the teachings were so simple, even as a, I was an eight-year-old, seven-and-a-half-year-old, I, I was able to read at a very early age. I was, I was a bad, <laughs> I'm, hey, I could read. I could understand those those teachers, those words. Go back, reevaluate, study the nation of Islam in the past. What made the nation of Islam, Islam successful? What are you doing or you're not doing? But above all, the nation of Islam is supposed to be not for the conversion of our people to a religion but simply bringing our people to, to love themselves. Love who you are. So love. I don't want nothing from you. I just want you to be happy. That's very important. That's a key. Just like if you're talking to a woman, brothers, that woman is not going to really be attracted to you when the only thing that she knows that you want is her breasts and her, her hips and her thighs and her legs. What about her as a human being? What about her as a person? You can't talk to her. You looking all down her blouse. We can't, you know, because you want something. It ain't always about your money. Love your people. It ain't all, it ain't all about, I want you to come follow me and all this kind of stuff. They need to, they need to, and even yourself, you want to be in a position where you are loved for who you are and not what you can give to somebody. So we need to go back to basics. And that is what this ministry represents, going back to basics. I'm not asking you to buy DVDs, uh, pay money for lectures and all this other stuff. I just want you to be happy. I want you to have life. I want to give a dead man back his soul. I'm not really worried about convincing you about what I believe in. My main concern is to find people with the like-minded minds, like minister, the realist temple, the reality is temple on earth. I can relate with that guy. I can say he's talking sense because he has intelligence. And he doesn't come up with rubbish. He comes up with well thought conversations. He's thought about this. He's still thinking about it as right now as we speak about it. And after that, he'll be thinking about it because he's a thinker. He's not just a doer taking information and repeating it. He's a thinker. He's been intrigued. His mind's been intrigued by reality, by things on earth that have woken him up so enough respect to him one of the greatest minds on your tube who ain't got no establishment I don't think I don't know what he what what he has or what he does but the greatest minds sometimes don't have much you know what I'm saying because I don't have much I, I barely just got this in my head and a few things no responsibilities though so, it's just about communicating this video. It's tricky. It's tricky. The minds of others have been living a way which is backwards or wrong from they could walk. And they got good at being backwards and wrong and believing that backwards and wrongness. So when you talk about rightfulness and forwardness, they think it is nonsense because they've never worked on those lines. So, 
Yeah. That's, that came out all right. Usually, it depends with communicating. It's a battle. So either you win and you do it well and it comes out perfect. Or it's like you're just clashing with swords and you're not really getting what's in your head out to the world to understand. But, where's that drink? Big up to the ministry, the minister, whatever his name is, Angel Nut 7, yeah, I really enjoyed your videos man, they're a bit long now. I do want to say something right now, um, there is a YouTuber who has really got in my heart, and that is Angel Snub Nup 7, he reminds me a lot of my father, my father died last year of a heart attack, and Angel Snub Nup 7. straighten me out. Uh, there have been times it was a, I had made a couple of videos really attacking Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton because I didn't like that we only seem to see them when a, uh, a, a nationwide case occurs or when celebrities need, are in trouble. And I didn't like that. But Angel Snuff Nuff 7 made a video recently speaking about how we need to band with black leaders. I don't care if they're not doing everything perfect. I don't care that we don't like certain things they do. They're the only support we have. Nobody else is stepping up and willing to be on the front lines like they are. And Angel Snuff Nuff 7 was correct, and I want to thank him for that because he may not have been directed towards me, but he may have been. But I heard what he said, and I want to thank you for that, teacher. I appreciate that. We have to band with people. Even though I, just, I, don't, I, I do critique and I do make comments about what's going on with the black gender war, I don't hate black men. Like I just mentioned, Angel Snuff Nuff 7 has gotten my heart. He's like my teacher, a mentor to me. I love him. And there are others that I love as well that I do listen to and I do. Last Man Standing is another one, you know. He don't comment much, but I, I know he's watching. And um, there are others that I admire them. And those are ones you can work with. Those are ones that you can, uh, we can unify with.